Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Harachach Warash. Double honors as always to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing and sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel which consists of the sincere Akim of Great Millstone that push and teach this word in truth and sincerity, as well as the speckled bird Hebrews of like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And this is an epistle that I had entitled through the spirit of probably how about me, I was shy, the testimony. And I was just going to get a few precepts touching upon um, the, uh, the gospel that us Hebrew Israelites preach, which is the true gospel of the Holy Bible, as it is written, all right? And its true intended purpose and with the true spirit behind it, which is the Harachach with us, the Holy Spirit. Okay, despite the uh, English words you may see in the Holy Bible at face value, the, the gospel that's being preached by the Christian church is not the correct gospel. It's not the correct. Still here. It's not the correct doctrine of the Holy Bible, all right? It's not the correct doctrine that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, through the Harachach Kodash, the Holy Spirit has given to His chosen people to preach amongst His chosen people. Nor is it the, um, nor is it the message that He sent His prophets to deliver to the heathen nations, okay? But without any further ado, I wanted to start off right here with this first precept. This is the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And the subheading says, Yahweh Shah's public ministry. And it's, you know, it's beautiful because that precept also, well not the precept, but the subheading right here for this chapter, or this portion of the chapter lets you know that it already implies that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmi Shah, he sent his prophets out to, you know, public places. And the main public places would be the highways and the hedges, going out to the highways and the byways, setting up camp and preaching the word to his people, all right, which would be the true biblical Hebrew Israelites, the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as the speckled bird Hebrew Israelite foreigners that look like heathen, but they're actually Israelites, all right, meaning that they have a tribal allotment. They go back to one of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, just like an outward looking so called Negro or Latino or Native American. All right. So Luke chapter four, verse 14, and it reads, And Yahweh Shai returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out a lucky and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. Yeah, the way that precept was worded just there, uh, it kind of confused me. I got tongue tied. So lucky. Verse 15. And he taught in their synagogues and being glorified of all Salakia. and he taught in their synagogues being being glorified of all and he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the shabbat day and stood up for to read verse 17 and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet isaiah and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And this is rare. Let us know Lord Yahweh Shai speak and reading out of the book of Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath appointed, it's like it, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim it's like it's a preach deliverance to the captives and, re and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears okay so right here our lord yahweh shah he was basically letting our people know 
that he he was the fulfillment of um of the book of Isaiah the 61st chapter all right because what our lord just read that was um the first verse of Isaiah chapter 61 one of my favorite chapters all right i think it, i think what our lord read was Isaiah chapter 61 from verses 1 to verse 3 if i'm not mistaken let me get that real quick. Book of Isaiah. Alright. Salakia. Got it right here. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61. One moment. It's lucky about that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1, and it reads The subhead says, The exaltation of the afflicted. The spirit of the Lord Yahweh Bashmel Shah is upon me, because the Lord Yahweh hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. And that word good tidings goes into the word uh, gospel. Okay? I think it's the Hebrew word Bashal. It's been a while since I pulled out this, uh, I got into the other word. Okay, it's Bashar. So Strong's H13. 19 which you know h means hebrew ba sha and we have the ra so bashar outline of biblical uses to salakia to bear news bear tidings publish preach show forth to gladden with good news to bear news to announce salvation as good news preach to receive good news all right strong's definitions bashar a primitive root properly to be fresh i.e full rosy figuratively cheerful to announce glad news messenger preach publish shoe forth bear bring carry preach good tell good tell good tidings all right so there you go right there this word right here is you know it's an it's like it's synonymous with the word gospel all right which gospel means the good news and this is why you see the men of uh the, the, the you know this is why you see the men of great millstone starting with our elder apostles and elder bishops on down out on the highways and the hedges out constantly doing video epistles because that's preaching the good news all right that's what that is the good news of salvation to the nation of israel the so-called negroes latinos native americans all right so I'm going to read that again. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, and it reads, The Spirit of the Lord Yahweh is upon me, because the Lord Yahweh hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our power, to comfort all that mourn. There you go. Okay, so what our Lord read was Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 2. So lucky about that. But the main point of this is, okay, the main point of this is the fact that our um, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, he was only sent to the nation of Israel for their salvation, okay? Because the nation of Israel has been in captivity under the heathen nations Salakia The nation of Israel has been under captivity Under the heathen nations ever since um, The fall Ever since you know right after the northern kingdom Southern kingdom split because uh, Northern kingdom went into the neo-Syrian captivity Northern kingdom being the so-called Latino Native American tribes Those are the ten tribes that went over to the Americas Which was called Arsereth at the time And then you had the southern kingdom Which would be the tribes of Judah, Benjamin and Levi The so-called Negroes, West Indians and Haitians they went into captivity under the Neo-Babylonians, all right? And both of these nations, you know, when you get the history, like our, elders, apostles, like our elder apostles and elder bishops get into often, both of those nations were actually um, Assyrians by blood, okay? But the Neo-Babylonians were just Assyrians that had conquered the region of Babylon, and they were, you know, taking on those customs because with, with the heathen, there's always some type of confusion, all right? But um, anyway, nevertheless, I got that precept. So the main point is... Getting back to Luke chapter 4, picking back up at verse 
verse 22 and this is right after our lord yahweh shah read the book of uh, the prophet isaiah and he said that that scripture was fulfilled and it reads like and it reads all bear and all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth and they said is not this joseph's son and he said unto them ye will surely say unto me this proverb physician heal thyself whatsoever we have heard done in capernaum do also here in thy country and he said verily i say unto you no prophet is accepted in his own country but i tell you of a truth many widows were in israel in the days of elias which is the prophet uh, elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land but unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Zidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel, Salaki, and many lepers were in Israel in the times of Elisus. And that's um, the Greek way of saying the prophet Elisha's name. That's um, the successor to the prophet Elijah, the one, the uh, prophet who had. Uh, prayed that he received the double portion of Elijah's spirit before Elijah was translated into the chariot before he was beamed up. All right, reading on, and none of them was cleansed, saving Salakia, saving Naaman the Syrian. Okay, and all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and they rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. But he passing through the midst of them went his way. All right, and this is that account that you may have heard our elder apostles and elder bishops and elders on down mention about how uh, Yahweh Shai, he had to deal with our people who were offended in him trying to uh, try to kill him at times. And this was the account that they mentioned where uh, our people tried to toss Yahweh Shai off of a cliff, but he used spiritual power to basically escape them, you know, Based off of this uh, account, was read right here. More than likely, our Lord he uh, he turned invisible, and you know he just basically went through. The, he basically walked right in the crowd of them, like and no one noticed him. But the point is that our Lord Yahweh Shai, this is the uh, this is the message that he preached. So this is the message that we are preaching coming in his stead. So it's not going to be a popular message, you know. And when and for those that it may seem um, acceptable to at first, let me get this real quick. One of my favorites. The book of Mark, chapter 4. Okay. The book of Mark, chapter 4. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And it reads And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by, by parables and said unto them in his doctrine which is the doctrine that came from the heavenly father yahweh the true doctrine of the holy scriptures verse 3 read let the lord yahweh shah speaking hearken behold they went out a sower to sow and it came to pass as he sowed there fell some by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up okay verse 5 and some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. This is a reason why, you know, constantly our elder apostles and elder bishops, they do edifying videos so that everybody that's in his knowledge and his truth that have ears to hear can be rooted in the doctrine. So you don't get confounded by a bugged out Christian walking up. So you don't get confounded by you know, uh, professional career scoffers like Vocab Malone or any of these bugged out Israelite camps. So no one can take away your crown. So you can't be sifted as wheat through Satan, the spiritual demon and whoever he may, whoever he may be uh, possessing on that particular day. All right. Verse seven. And it reads, and some fell up among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit and others fell on good ground and it did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some in hundred and he said unto them he that hath ears to hear let him hear 
And what our Lord Yahweh Shah was talking about was the word, which he explains. And when he says uh, about the seeds falling on good ground, that's for those that receive the knowledge and his truth. And then, you know, they basically grow in it. And that's why our Lord also said um, some thir some 30, it's so like and brought forth some 30, some 60 and some 100, because that gets into the the portion of um of this knowledge and this truth that Yahweh Shah that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah Salaki Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah has given to individuals amongst the body. You know, there's some uh, individuals that come, you know, right out the gate that's really good with prophecy. Some individuals come out the gate really good with the Hebrew, so forth and so on. And you know, also with how much how much work they produce in the ministry. Now, this isn't the puff anybody up. Speaking to myself first and foremost, but this is just how the precept is broken down. And you know, regardless of whatever level you are with the talent that was given you you still have to um you still have to have charity you still have to make sure that your character and your conduct is acceptable in the eyes of your how about me shy and your rank or your talent or whatever you may have it can't um it can't puff you up because our lord yahweh shy he was the ultimate israelite so to speak all right he had spiritual power he wasn't uh tempted he was tempted in the flesh but he overcame all of the temptations he didn't fall like we typically fall all right. So none of us have anything to glory over, which our elder apostles and other bishops constantly say, and our elders on down constantly say. OK, Mark, chapter four, verse 10, and it reads, and when he was alone, they that were about him, it's like they were that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, read that the Lord Yahweh Shah speaking unto you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of the most high power, Yahweh, but unto them that are without like it, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. And that gets into why elders, elder apostles to heart, he, I, I, you know, I constantly hear elder apostles to heart say this the most, you know, me personally. I constantly hear him out of the four apostles of, our, of Great Millstone. I hear him say this the most. Uh, you're not going to get this. Like, yeah, he didn't get this because he's not of the elect. Constantly, Elder Apostle Tahar says that because of how close we are to the end through the spirit. That's why he says that. He's not saying that, you know, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai can't put the spirit on somebody to repent. What he is saying is the elect, they don't receive the word with all of this, this, this pushback, you know. Now, there were times where, you know, in the past, it may have been individuals that, you know, may have heard the word, but, you know, the Lord, he just didn't choose for that time to be the time that they woke up, similar to the Apostle Paul. OK, he was persecuting the church at first as a Pharisee when he was known as Saul. But when Yahweh Shah knocked him off the horse and he and he supped with him, he became Apostle Paul unto the Gentiles. But, you know, not that's a special case. Typically, you know, you either get it or you don't. You know, you either hear the word and you receive it and you start to study and you start to be diligent in it. And then when you may um, come, when you, when you may hit a, like a roadblock in your studies, then you inquire of a man oh, elder in, than you in the spirit, you know, like an elder brother or, you know, one of the um, one of the elders or one of the elder bishops, one of the elder apostles via, you know, going to a video. Or if you, you know, if you know them or whatever your case may be, you can even ask them personally, depending on what the Lord has made your situation. Go, so, you know, so forth and so on. All right. Um, Mark chapter four verse 13 and it reads and he said unto them know ye not this parable and how then will ye know all parables the sower soweth the word right there you go to that's the seed and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown but when they have heard satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts which is why the book of first Peter chapter five, verse eight tells you to be sober and be vigilant. OK, because if you're not rooted in this truth, if you got too much doubts, if you asking all the wrong questions for all the wrong reasons, then Satan, he can he can screw with you. All right. <clears throat> and this is something that brothers constantly, you know, that are in the spirit, they constantly meditate upon this, man. It's not to be worried like, oh, what if Satan comes? No, it's just, you know, be realistic. We're in the flesh. Anything that anything Satan can use to sift us, he'll use it. And typically he uses the things that we like the most because you'll be on guard around things that you don't like. All right. That's why you have to be sober and vigilant. It's one of the main key reasons you got to be sober and vigilant. This is why 
the scriptures tell us to uh, put our flesh under subjection. You know, it may be Satan can use a, a, a fat butt woman to try to get you sifted out the truth. They, Satan can use um, a, a lucrative job opportunity to sift you out the truth. Anything. You got to think about the things that you like the most as your number one, um, your number one opposition in this knowledge and this truth. Okay. Obviously, think about the things that you don't like, you know, like, um, you know, somebody that whose personality ain't your cup of tea. Satan could use him to just aggravate you to the point of overthrow, which is uh, the Greek word siniazo. All right. But anyway, reading on Mark chapter four, verse 15, and it reads, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Right. And here's the point, verse 17. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And this gets into uh, individuals that hear the truth and take to it, but then eventually at some point they fall out because of the persecution that comes with the word or when it comes time to catch hell. Like, you know, your finances may be attacked. Your woman may start acting like a demon. You know, Satan may jump on her, so forth and so on. Uh, um, what else? What else? I'm trying to remember. It's a few other things. But yeah, just any number of persecution that comes for the word's sake that conflicts with you being comfortable in this world. But having to choose to walk in the spirit of probably how about me out shot. These things will make the most um, um, elegant, uh, so like the most eloquent speaker, the most uh, um, the most well versed precept, man, the most well versed prophecy, man, the most be the most uh, best speaker when it comes to the Hebrew, the Lashua and Kodash. This will make the greatest men of the congregation uh, fall out the truth if they are not rooted. All right, this this is why I love this chapter right here. It's a good reminder for me, myself as a younger brother, on the importance of being rooted. Okay? Because through the reports of our elders and apostles of Great Millstone, we hear about a lot of Jakes that um that were great men in the congregation that was on fire and it fell out. All right, they talk about this often. And you know, contrary to popular belief, it's not about Oh, somebody disliking somebody. No. When somebody falls out and becomes a demon, you have to mark them so they don't infect other uh, sincere members of the congregation with a bullshit. You can look at the uh, count in the book of Numbers, the 14th chapter, and see what happens when you don't um, when you don't get a chance to mark Jakes that are being wicked like that, man. When Jakes get to uh, weasel their, their unbelief, when they get to spew their unbelief out their mouth like venom and it infects the rest of the congregation, and everybody else is all scared and, and no and of no use to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. All right. All right, reading on. Mark chapter 8, so I can march up to 4, verse 18. And it reads, And these are they which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And that's something I've been hearing these past few weeks from the um from the beloved elders of the different GMS camps, was um these exhortations they've been giving us to, you know. And as well as the elder brothers, you know, the other brothers underneath the elders that have been talking about, you know, you got you can't let a woman or anything in this world sift you out the truth or make you, you know, less on fire. You can't be out here surprised when when uh when Eve start bugging out on you or when any of your women start bugging out on you. Not that's nece not necessarily even just Eve, but any of the women you deal with, even if you deal with a heathen woman that seems like she's okay for a season, you gotta be you gotta expect these women act bugged out because Elder Pastor Har even said it. He said it yesterday in the video, a good little reminder about balance. You know, like, yeah, don't marry any of these women. It doesn't matter how, you know, the elders and apostles, they exhort you to like, look, don't be limited to just the Israelite woman, but, prepare, you know, expect all these women to have some bullshit with them, man. We in captivity. We in Babylon the Great, you know, and this Babylonian influence, it's spread all throughout the world. Now, some in some countries less than others, but there's still going to be enough of that bull crap where you and your woman are not going to see eye to eye all the time. But you can't let that make it where, like the elders were saying, back to my original point, elders have been saying it from these, uh, from multiple different GMS camps. You can't let uh, the issues with your woman uh, shock you as if that's something new when you've been told multiple times. You can't let it shock you to where you're doing less videos, you come into camp less, or you know you constantly always talking about 
how, you know, Eve or, you know, the heathen woman you're dealing with is giving you hell. Like, it's more important shit to do, especially being this close to the kingdom of heaven being at hand. Right? So, that being said, that, that gets into, you know, the cares of this world and how they can choke out and how they can choke the word and you it becomes unfruitful. Because you're supposed to receive this word, you know, the seed, okay? The seed's supposed to take root within you, your mind, all right, which is supposed to be the good ground, all right? And then it's supposed to spring forth into the tree and bear fruit, which is your works in this truth. You going out to the highways and the hedges, you're doing video epistles, you studying to um grow in this truth. Whatever precepts you know, you keep studying and going over them to uh, attain a, a mastery over them. No matter how many times you, you feel like you have a mastery, you keep going over it and keep going over it and keep going over it. Because the spirit, you know, like Lord Yahweh Shah said, they that believe with him as the scriptures have said, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. And that gets into how you constantly always have new edification on these precepts. As long as we're in this flesh, there's always more that we can learn. You, you are not going to master every single precept in this flesh. Now, you'll know enough to teach the elect unto salvation, you know, but we're not going to receive everything until the kingdom. All right. Even, as, as, you know, as far as the Lashwan Kadash, I remember one time in an old video, the Apostle Ramlob had said, we're not going to receive the, um, the full uh, Hebrew until the kingdom. But right now, Yahweh Bosh Miao Shai is giving us enough you know, unto salvation. He's given us, he's given us enough to, uh, you know, rehearse these righteous acts pursuant to Judges chapter 5, verse 11. Okay? Reading on Mark chapter 4, verse 20, and it reads, And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Right? So the point is, you know, when it comes to those where the, the word is sown on good ground, they, uh, they bring forth fruit. Okay? And ultimately, this is, and this is referring to the elect. These individuals don't just bring forth fruit for a season. These individuals, they remain consistent in this ministry. All right. They endure to the end that they might be saved because you have many individuals that, you know, have fallen out that, you know, I'm, you know, I speak as a man, but I'm pretty sure even our elders and apostles, when they were um, younger in the faith, they, you know, they wouldn't expect certain individuals that fell out to have fallen out because of how consistent they may have been. And this is, you know, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah is not unrighteous. He's doing this as an exhortation to us younger brothers and all of us of all ages spiritually in this truth to remain on fire, to remain diligent, to pray and to fast. Because if you don't use these um these spiritual uh, defenses that any spiritual abilities Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah has gifted us with, you will fall out the truth. All right. And it'll be for the most dumbest reason. And then you'll be sitting there just scratching your head. Wondering why. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, the book of John, chapter 15. Okay. This is the book of John, chapter 15, verse 14, and it reads. This is where let us know Yahweh Shah speaking. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If ye, Salakia, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. And the subject says, disciples' relation to the world. This is how a disciple of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, Salakia, this is how a disciple of Yahweh Shai is going to naturally relate to the world if they are truly his disciple. Reading on verse 19. If ye were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So you got to expect that in this knowledge and this truth. All right. All right. John chapter 15, verse 20. And it reads, remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Right. So once again. You know, the spirit of the prophets is subject unto the prophets. And also, underneath that, you have um, 
friends of the prophets, helps of the prophets, individuals in the nation of Israel that believed in the prophets in the past life. And it may not have been their lot to be uh, prophets and teachers and bishops and deacons and apostles like those men of the Lord. But they believed in, you know, what they had, whatever resources they had in this world, they used it for the benefit of the ministry. OK, or whatever they could do to help out. That was the lot Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah set them in. So it's not just gonna be how um one man of Israel or you know, the prophets teach, and then you have a bunch of men that hear, or a good number of men that hear, and then they also become uh teachers and prophets as well. But you also have it where these men teach, and then you have individuals that hear the word and they help out in the position that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah has given them. Okay. Um verse twenty one. And it reads, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that had sent so like they know not him that sent me. If I had not come un so like if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sinned, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me, so like he that hateth me hateth my father also. <laughs> St. John chapter 15 verse 24 If I had not done among them the works which none other man did they had not sinned but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father but this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law they hated me without a cause but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Amen. So this right here, this precept right here, lets you know that these are the reasons why the, that why the people of our nation are going to hate us. If we preach the truth of the of the Holy Scriptures and that why we should expect that. And it goes without saying the heathen will hate us because they always hated us um, following the law, statutes and commandments. Once they realized that's how we were so powerful, that's how we were over them. OK, but the, the main point I wanted to get from what uh, Louis Yahweh had given us with this precept. Is the fact that they also hate us because once they see the works and they hear the word being preached in truth and sincerity, they don't have any more excuse for their sins. They don't have any more excuse for their bullshit. They got no more excuse for being a simp. They got no more excuse for committing adultery. They got no more excuse for being moles. They got no more justification for any of these things they do that they justify under the, the dirty blanket of Christianity. They don't got any more excuse for eating abominable uh, animals and calling it food. They don't got any more excuse for calling on uh, uh, white boy God and white boy Jesus. They don't got no more excuse for that. So-called white boy, because there's no such thing as a white person. All right, they're, they're Edomites. Those Edomite images of our Heavenly Father's only begotten son, which is blasphemy. That's the true blasphemy, all right? As far as, you know, uh, when they talk about some, oh, well, you guys, you making that image of the, the Messiah as a so-called uh, dark-skinned man, that's a graven image. Nobody's bowing down to it, jackass. That's not a graven image. That's a depiction to let you know what our uh, Messiah would have looked like, okay? That wasn't wicked if our people did that, okay? There's nothing wrong with making an image so our people know who you're referring to, you know? So we that's also a part of visual learning, which Esau understood because he's that old serpent called the devil and Satan that the Bible speak of. He, a serpent meaning that he's wise, okay? He has a thorough knowledge of good and evil, but he operates in evil. So he knew... That if you convince a people that their power looks like their enemy, you have their mind. You got them in a complete docile state and you can do whatever you want with them. This is why they hate um, our elder apostles and elder bishops and great millstone and Akimon down that teach this likewise doctrine. Because this is the doctrine of Yahweh Shah. Our Lord said, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Okay. Which leads me to this last precept through the spirit, Isaiah chapter 53. And it reads... So like Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1, and the subject says, The suffering servant. And it reads, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the armor of the Lord Yahweh Bashmel Shah revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And like our elder apostle and elder bishops broken down 
and elders on down broken this uh, precept down. It doesn't mean our Lord Yahweh Shai. This is also talking about Yahweh Shai for those who don't know. It doesn't mean he's going to come looking busted and, and deformed. It just means that his presentation as what he is, you know, his presentation, as, you know, as far as his ministry and his preachings go, is not going to be what you want. It's not going to be the first thing you expect or accept. You're going to expect Hebrew and a Hellcat. You're going to expect let's march and let's do all this NCAA crispy, crunchy coon shit. Let's believe that every single Israelite is only going to look like a so-called Negro, West Indian or Haitian. Let's do that. That's not how the Lord is coming. That's not how we came 2000 years ago. His doctrine, which is the truth, the true doctrine of the Holy Bible, because he's the word made flesh. All right. He, Yah Lord Yahweh spoke him into existence. The Heavenly Father Yahweh spoke Yahweh shine into existence. You know, so he's the word, both uh, parabolically speaking and literally speaking. OK. His doctrine is going to offend. It's not going to have comeliness. It's not going to be the first thing you gravitate towards. It has good, the bad and the ugly, which is why the precept says and the scriptures say eat the whole roll. So you got to accept the good, the bad, and the ugly of the precepts. And most people can't do that. Verse 3, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we, as it were, hid our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the most high power and afflicted. He was wounded, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Right. So our Lord Yahweh Shai being beaten and, you know, being crucified on that cross, that was for the sins of the nation of Israel. Once again, Lord, you know, the Heavenly Father Yahweh speaking through the blood of prophet Isaiah, this is possessive. This is not talking about the heathen. You know, all prophecy must be fulfilled. So one way or the other, replacement theology doesn't work. This is only about the true biblical Hebrew Israelites. And these, he, these true biblical Hebrew Israelites are Hebrew Israelites in spirit because they believe in Yahweh Bashmi al Shai, but they also have to be Israelites in the flesh. They have to be of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and have a tribal allotment among, amongst Salakia, amongst one of Jacob's 12 sons. Okay? So, you know, just a good reminder right there. Don't fall for the Christianity. That's that's the same lies we came out of, and these lies have destroyed us. So you got to be realistic. Are you going to go back to the same thing that's been damaging you, that's been causing you to lose limbs, that's been making you, uh, you know, blind, dumb, maimed, halted, you know, leprous? Or are you going to come to that, that cleansing water, all right, which is this word, which is this knowledge and this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi al Shai? All right, you got to choose which one you're going to accept. All right, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, and it reads, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Through Yahweh Shai going through what he went through, he is the reason why we even comprehend this knowledge and this truth. Elder Apostle Kabar said it in an old video. Our Lord had, he said, once you realize the truth about our Lord, you would never look at this Bible again he, because he had to die to, for us to get this knowledge. Okay? And since the servant is not greater than his Lord, some of us will have to, uh, you know, follow that same route for the sake of truth. If we want to uh, receive our incorruptible crown in the kingdom, you know, I don't want to desire we be of that very elect number. And this is why we have to, you know, give this diligence. The Lord's not going to just hand the kingdom to just any Israelite. You know, two thirds of our people choose to be like heathen. Isaiah 53 verse 6, and it reads, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord Yahweh hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Right. So this is Lord Yahweh Shah, man. Verse 7. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. That didn't mean he couldn't speak, and he was, you know, actually dumb. You know, that word dumb gets into just not physically speaking. You know, he didn't do that because... He knew that he had to fulfill prophecy. He didn't say, oh, I didn't do it. I'm innocent. No, he knew he was innocent, but he had to suffer for the sake of prophecy. He had to fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. So we would have an example of how to walk when it comes time to fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, no matter how gruesome it may be, no matter how uncomely it may be. All right. The uncomeliness of this doctrine prepares us for the uncomeliness that the world is going to bring to us. So we don't fall out the truth. So we don't fold when that time comes. OK. And now. This precept right here, the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 28. 
to explain what it's all for. And it reads, Ye are they, this is Red Letters with Lord Yahweh Shah speaking, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me, that ye may be, it's like that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Amon. So that's the reason why we do this, man. The, the, you know, the 12 apostles, they're going to sit on their 12 thrones and underneath them is going to be the 144,000, which is 12,000 mighty men out of each of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Then you got the hopeful elect men, women and children directly under that. And the two thirds come back through the loins of the elect men that survive in their right mind. All right. The two thirds won't be two thirdians anymore. They won't be two thirds. They'll be righteous Israelites as it is written in the book of Isaiah, the 60th chapter in the 18th verse. All right. That uh, all the Lord's people shall be righteous, which is all thy people shall be righteous. Roughly paraphrasing. And getting back into being sifted. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And it reads, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And that's beautiful because it also goes into how Satan, he doesn't go for the Israelites he already had that are wicked. He goes for the elect Israelites. He goes for the ones that have a chance at salvation. Okay. Verse 32, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Amen. And that's what we got to do for brothers in the faith, man. The Lord prayed for uh, the, the disciple Peter, who later became apostle Peter, the head of the church. So we got to pray for one another. You know, we don't know. We ain't even got to know what a brother's going through, but just throw up prayers, man. I don't want you how about me on shot rock this The Lord keeps that spirit on all of us to keep doing that because, you know, Jake go through the infirmities. They. They bullshit at the plantation, their financial this and that, so forth and so on, and just, you know, catching spiritual hell as well. There's hell from all sides. But that's what we got Yahweh Bashmi on Shah for, and Yahweh Bashmi on Shah, he gave us this ministry for those of us that are sincere. But that's all I have in this epistle. Hopefully, this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Harachak Wadash. Double honors as always to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing the sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elected of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. Kwame Asherala and Abba Baba. We're almost out of here. Adawan Ratazah, and we got next Adawan Ratazah. Shema, Yasha Allah, Yahawa, Allah Hayanawa, Yahawa, Achad. Wa Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Baba Kusha Baba Kusha Baba Kusha Shalach Rayam Wa Ainashim Wa Haragim Wa Ashim Wa Abadim Wa Mashapatim All Call Adawamim Wa Ayabim Nawa Wa Gawayim Wa Babal Wa Babal Wa Babal Wa Babal I Tha I Tha I Tha I Tha The Water Tamya Tawab Aman Shalom.